Hey there, this is Tammy McDonald, and if you are new to my channel, thank you for tuning in. I really greatly appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. So just to give you a little bit of idea of what I'm about and what this channel is about, maybe what it can do for you, it's, uh, it's about personal growth. It's about changing your mindset in particular on how to change your life, basically, and how to live better than where you possibly are today. Now, what I'd like to talk about, I just want to give you a little bit of background information about me and where I'm coming from and what my personal journey is. And really, I'm going to start with nine years ago. Okay, now we're taking a little bit of a time warp, but nine years ago, I was married to a wonderful man. He was my soulmate. I met him out of high school. I'm sure you've had stories like this before, or you've heard them, or maybe that's you. But anyway, he was an alcoholic, unfortunately. He did have a bout with that for years, and he even finally quit. He was sober for five years. Now, he still didn't get over the cirrhosis of the liver. In fact, we never really knew for sure if that was going to end his life. And uh, anyway, one day I was at work on a Sunday afternoon just trying to pull some overtime and I get a call from him and he's like, look, you know, I'm not feeling good. I think it's my heart. I may be having a heart attack. I need you to come home right away. So of course I flew home. He looked awful. So I immediately called 911 and I got him to the hospital. Well, I told the doctor what was going on. They, of course, started to put him on tests to run for his heart. And then within 24 hours, he fell into a coma. And I was like, what is going on? So they run more tests on him. And then they find out it was his liver. It had nothing to do actually with his heart. And I was like, his liver? And they said, yeah. They said that his liver is breaking down and shutting down and it's releasing toxins into his blood and that is what's causing him to be in a coma. So that was a lot to take in. And then the next thing I know they admitted him to ICU. And he's on life support. And uh, I had a 13 year old daughter at the time and a 7 year old son who did not understand what was happening to their dad. And I said, doctor, what are my, what, what, what's the prognosis? What can I do? What, what's going to happen to him? And they're like, you've got three choices right now. Number one is either if he survives, he's going to be a vegetable and you're going to have to take on the responsibility of moving him to an assistant living home closest one to where my location is. I'm in Winter Haven, Florida, but the closest one's in Orlando, which is an hour away. And they said he would need round-the-clock uh, care. And it's very expensive. And they said that maybe insurance wouldn't cover it all. And then they said option two is to leave him on life support and just see if he happens to come out of it. But if he does, chances are he's going to be a vegetable. He's going to he's not going to be who he was when he checked in. He'll never be the same. And then the third option, which was the most heartbreaking, and I don't mean to get emotional, was just that uh, take him off life support and let him go. So, Luckily, his mom was still alive, and uh, his older brother, they live next to me here. And I, I talked over the options with them, and they said, it's your decision. You're the wife. You have to make the decision. What do you think you can do? What can you manage? And we support you. And I was like, you know, and I, I thought about it overnight, and I remember what he said. He said, don't ever leave me as a vegetable. If, this, if I ever get into a situation where I'm on life support, let me go. And then I weighed the options and I was like, I can't afford to put him in a long-term assistant living house and then to have the kids see a shell of a man that doesn't exist anymore. 
So within one week, he was dead. I had to let him go. I took him off the of life support and I let him go. And it was one of the hardest things that I ever did in my life. And after that, I had to explain to the kids what I did. And it was a rough road. My daughter, she was very close to him. She hated me. She wished I was dead instead of him. My son, he went into a shell. He never cried. He never said anything about his dad dying. And then he started gaining a lot of weight. He just stayed in his room and ate his emotions. So not only am I dealing with my grief, but I'm having to be the backbone for my kids. One who is totally irate and out of control, my daughter, and angry, and then my son who was totally clammed up and into a shell. And I thought, and you know, and I went through my bouts. The only time I would cry would be in my car or in my bed because I didn't want it to see that their mom was hurting and weak. I had to get my shit together. I had to go to work. I had to support these kids. Now, here's another interesting fact. I'm an only child. I have no brothers or sisters to help me raise these kids. My dad was the only one alive. My mom passed 10 years before that. And he was my only family, but he lived two hours away. And I couldn't leave my job and he couldn't leave where he was at to get closer to the kids. So they were latchkey kids. What else could I do, right? <clears throat> so three years went by and then my dad dies. I know this all sounds really depressing, but maybe you've gone through something like this. Long story short, I hated my life. I started gaining weight. I wasn't taking care of myself. I didn't give a crap about anyone or anything. I hated my job. And I was like, this can't be my life. I, I was like, this has got to stop. I am not going to live this way. What if I become a diabetic because I'm overweight and my kids are left orphans because I'm stupid me is not taking care of myself and I'm miserable and I know that it's showing. I know that it's reflecting and the kids are picking it up. Until one day, it just all came together. As I said, shit hit the ceiling. I said to myself, that's it. I'm in my mid forties. I want to change my life. I'm not doing this anymore. And the only way that I can change my life is to change my thinking. But how am I going to do it? So I started seeking the answers. And long story short, to get to the point of this video, is that if you're a widow, maybe you've just been divorced, maybe a long time boyfriend and girlfriend just decide to up and leave you, you know, whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life, or maybe you just, just hate yourself, you know, you hate yourself, you hate your life, and you're like, is there anything more to this? There's got to be something more to life, right? But the truth is, it's not what's going on outside of your life that's affecting you. And it's not what happened to you. It's actually what's going on in here. And it took me many years to realize that, and I finally did. And I'll tell you, I would love to share more information with you on this video, but there's so much, there's so much more. And it's great because I'm going to tell you what, I have turned my life around and I'm still a work in progress, but I just want to share it with the world. I want to share it with you that this is possible for you and your life. And hey, if you found some value, if you found some connection in what I'm saying, if you feel something in you that is ready to change and get out of your rut and just finally spread your wings and fly and move on with your life, then I would love to teach you some more. I would love to help you. I do have a link below. If you just click the link below, it'll take you to my website. 
you can enter your email address and I have a free video series that I can send to you that will give you some tips that may help you out. I mean, you don't know until you try, right? That's my motto anyway, and I'm glad I tried. And I would like, I want it for you. So, you know, if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe, thumbs up would be great. And check out the link below and, uh, you know, it's up to you if you want to do it, if you want to change your life, I, you know, it's up to you. All I can say in the words of Earl Nightingale, you have nothing to lose, but you got a whole life to gain. Thank you for listening. And I hope to see you soon.